Urban densification is increasing. When wandering through the contemporary city, whether in the core or on the urban periphery, if one pays close attention, the abandoned and derelict spaces or sites under development are everywhere. These spaces are highly prized and diminishing fast. Since the challenges that cities face are numerous and the problems vast, these spaces remain sites of possibility and opportunity to design and construct innovative solutions that respond to what a city needs. Can these spaces be more than something we see in past daily? Is there a way that individuals and communities can contribute to the development and planning process of these spaces, and consequently, the design and construction of the future city? some of the challenges that you, you recently faced in your well, own practice? Well, it goes beyond, in that case, it really goes beyond the city, right? And it goes to design culture, architectural culture in general, and how architecture is perceived, generally speaking, in urban areas like Ottawa. Um, and I think there's problems between, let's say, builders, let's say in this case, builders and people in the community where the development is occurring, uh, just have to do, well they stem initially from kind of, at that scale, let's say infill scale, I think it stems from misconceptions and um, a lack of information, for sure. For real, man? Are you serious? Even if someone paid you 500 bucks, you wouldn't go. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. I have better things to do with my time. Oh, come on, man. You know you love that hip-hop rhythm stuff, you know. That's your, that's your stuff. That's what you like. That's what you jam to. Okay, I see what yeah. you're doing. I see what you're doing. So because I'm African, I'm supposed to like people banging on trash can, right? No, 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 no. I didn't say anything like that, man. I'm saying that's your personal thing. That's what you like to listen to. Okay. Isn't Let that right? Let me make it clear for you. I am not interested at all. Pound tooth. But all jokes aside though, it's crazy the amount of money they actually charge for such a small space around here. Yeah, yeah man, I know. I guess the price reflects how little property there is. It's crazy. I mean, look at this space. It's such a waste of space. Do you think the city will actually pour some money into it? Yeah, it's been there for a while. Oh yeah, since the late 1800s. And like it had various it was function. It was a jazz bar, a soccer pub, a clothing store, and even a dance studio. Crazy. I heard this guy actually uh, just bought it recently, but the renovations cost him so much that he just had to leave it. It's just sitting there unused. The city's not getting that much help. Oh, shit. Can you just imagine the endless possibilities for this place? Only if they will put a little bit of money into it. The location is unbeatable. The size of it. There's tons of parking in the back. I can already see so many cool things happening here. Yeah, man. Tell me about it. It seems like the trend in the city is just to demolish stuff just so they can put in something new or modern, you know? Instead of just keeping the old beauty that was there already. I just really don't get it. I don't think anyone gets it. What happened with those homes is that they were uh, they were they were purchased and through the years uh, rented out, but it became a little bit of a it became a little bit of a bad situation where the homes were not properly maintained, and so I hate to use the word, but a little bit like a you know slumlord uh, area, and that's happened in a few locations in Ottawa. These properties have been owned by developers who didn't care, and I'm not going to tell you their names, but the city knows very well. It's a long history going back to many, many years. And they were basically just allowed to run down. They were maintained just enough that they could get people to come in and rent. But the people that tended to rent were lower income. Uh, the students sometimes, people may be on welfare. Uh, what happened ultimately was the city ordered a, uh, a demolition two years ago. Two and a half, three it was years actually, ago. It yeah. was actually came from Supreme Court of Ontario. 
uh, which was ignored. So the house is still standing. Now how you can do that, how you can ignore a Supreme Court order to demolish and make safe, I don't know, but they did. And that's <laughs> how it stands. Well, the current owner wanted to put up a 20-unit, uh, 20 20, 22? 22-unit 20, apartment building. Small apartments? They would be very tiny apartments. 22 units is a bit much for this part of the city. It would be a uh, difficulty for parking, and maybe it's a little too high a density in uh, a neighborhood of this, of this sort. These are all single-family homes, except for a few that are uh, apartmented. Not a hundred years, but come on. Yeah, I was actually uh, doing some research on this a little while ago, and um, it used to be like this apartment building with a pizza place in the bottom, but it got taken down by like this huge fire. And then they were like trying to build this huge like apartment slash retail complex or whatever, like a five-story thing, but they just never did it. When was the fire? Like 2005. It's been sitting like this for 10 years now. It's crazy. <sighs> okay, let's go. There's one more spot I want to show you before we head home. Cool, all right. While there may be public consultations, again, the format of those is so antiquated that you're getting the same audience. And they're not effective and you can, we know that they're not effective because we see that bad projects are being built. And that is the number one proof that the current consultation and the way that we engage the citizens of our cities is not working because capital still makes the projects it wants to make without much reflection on what it is that we need or want for our cities to be great. And ways to remove barriers to that conversation and to that engagement are absolutely crucial. And in the absence of such a platform, and in the absence of a desire to change the current engagement process, we get the same results. It's a very simple thing. If nothing changes, everything stays the same. And so the same can be said here for how we design and build our cities. So I don't know. I'm sure we'll find something. Yeah. We just gotta keep positive and whatever. Yeah, we'll I see. guess you're right. Oh shit, what is this place? It's like a cold, old like a uh, car mechanic shop or something? I don't know what the spot is, but man, that will make a cool studio. You well, we can actually have shows here, we can sell some music, sell some art. We can jam here. Wait, have you seen this place before? Yeah. Why the shit didn't we come here today then? I know, I know. I checked it out already when we were setting up the viewings. Do you just have any idea how much the guy wants for the rent? What, like three grand, three and a half? That wouldn't be so bad. Five G's. Seriously? Is it okay in there? Like, would we have to do some work or, or something? And the place is pretty destroyed. I don't think there's been any work done in there for years. So believe it or not, my friend, it's another one on the other was part who has been empty for so many years. That is a real goddamn shame. This, man, look at this place. I know. I know. It's unfortunate we were not born with the silver spoon. We would have more dreams to actually chase. Come on, let's go. Urban life plays out against the backdrop of three intersecting spheres. The processes of urbanization, the natural environment, and the digitization of mass amounts of data by information communication technologies. Yet, as cities continue to change, development and planning processes remain a step behind. 
The challenge is to connect individuals and communities with developers and city officials and enable collaborative and process-driven urban and architectural design that tackles big city problems. This involves creating conditions of transparency, predictability, and accountability by deploying tools that inform, engage, and empower people to be part of the conversation.